Welcome to Resident Evil. Here is take three on trying to record a game with this, and I'm going to be starting over since obviously I can record the beginning. So this was recently released as an HD version on Steam with some new costumes, well a pair of new costumes, a few changes, but overall it's not really too much of a large leap from the original GameCube version. So let's go straight into the new game. So here we have our options. I'm going to use the alternate control scheme, which allows you for a little bit more mobility. I don't have a game controller on hand to use for this, so I'm really I can use any control scheme. It's all going to be a little alien to me. So question, how do you like your games? Your options are like climbing a mountain, like going on a hike, or like taking a walk. Now if I remember the GameCube version, I think your options were like mountain and hike. I don't really remember the walk part. We are going the mountain route. So your options are Chris or Jill. The difference between them is Jill has access to a grenade launcher. Chris only has a shotgun. Chris has six inventory spots, which requires in, uh, improved inventory management, while Jill has eight. And from the get-go, you can actually choose your costume that you're going to be using for the game. So here we have Chris's Resident Evil 5 costume. Here we have Jill's Resident Evil 5 costume. And we are going to play Chris for the first playthrough. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Found it yet? No, not yet, right? Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently beaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. this way. Enter the survival horror. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. 
we don't know where Barry is. <sighs> is everyone all right? Barry. Where's Barry? He's... No. What was that? I'll go and check it out. All right. Jill and I will stay and secure this area. Chris? Take care. I don't know yeah. if the lip sync being off is my computer or the game. So I'm just going to put that disclaimer out right now. It's not always going to line up. But otherwise, you may notice Chris is now in his Resident Evil 5 costume, and in the opening scene, he was in his originals costume. The pre rendered scenes, which are the ones that were made before the game, pretty much that's the way you want to think about it, will be using the defaults. The stuff that's actually rendered in game with the engine will be using their costumes. So we may be seeing Chris jump back to his default in a couple scenes, but for the most part, we should be using the one we're wearing, which is Resident Evil 5. So over here we have the famous Resident Evil scene. Cue it. And you have no incentive to fight the zombie whatsoever. So we're leaving. Later, dude. The camera angles are messing with me to a certain degree. It might take a little bit of getting used to remember where the camera changes to what angle, but every once in a while you're going to see me do something like that where I walk into the wall or even walk into a zombie. So just heads up. As for the game at hand, this is not intended to be like a world record speedrun. I'm just trying to show you guys a comfortable way to get through the game without too much difficulty or hassle. So one more scene here. Wesker? Jill? Where did they go? So here we have Jill's gun. Chris dropped his while outside, which is why we're walking around with a knife equipped. I know some speedrunners prefer to run around with a knife. I really don't give a damn. We're not actually going to be using the gun for a little while until we, after we reach the first save room, so no incentive to switch it yet. In the meantime, the zombie has moved from the hallway, so we were able to run past the dead body to move forward through the game. Some of your dead friends will have things on them that you can get by searching them. Kenneth has a videotape that we can watch near the end of the game. Of course, you only watch it if you grab it now or one of the times when you pass through here. And there's even a chance I may not remember to show it, so cross your fingers, gentlemen. So this first area does not have any zombies in it. This is a bit of a safe room that has some supplies for you. So right here by the birdcage we have a clip that's 15 bullets. We have a pair of green herbs, which I'm going to take because I don't remember the game like the back of my hand anymore. It's been many, many years since I played the GameCube version. And I'm bound to be making a few mistakes, which is why I am going to be taking some health items just as a buffer. Like I said, I'm not trying to show you a world record speedrun. I'm trying to help you guys get through the game in case you're having trouble with it on your own. So I'll show you which zombies are actually worthwhile to kill, which ones you can pretty much ignore. And for the most part, you can ignore a lot of them. It's just some of them are pretty convenient to whack when you have the chance. So we got past one zombie. We need this arrow to advance the story. They're telling you to examine it because there's something up with it. I'm going to grab this clip, and because of the new controls, I can actually maneuver around this zombie pretty 
safely for the most part. Come on. So once he makes his jump, or his lunge animation, he has to go through a cooldown before he can move again. That's your cue to run past him, and like I said, I'm playing with the alternate control scheme, which gives you a much greater sense of mobility than before. And all in all, I'm okay with doing this because I'm playing on an Xbox controller. When I played Resident Evil a lot, I did it with a GameCube controller, and the controls are significant, or the controllers are significantly different from one another to kind of justify the crutch, I hope. So over here I'm going to try to bait the zombie to this side so I can push that statue down. If you get the blue gem, you can later trade it in for a set of shotgun shells. If you don't feel you need the set of shotgun shells, just run out the door on the other side of the room. If you feel the need for them, I'm going to show you how to get them without having to waste bullets, precious, precious bullets on this zombie. So we need to get him on this side of the room, that way we can push the statue around in peace. the zombie is not over by that door by the time we need to actually walk through it. So once we get this to the opening and the railing, we need to give it a little push, and it's going to shatter down below so we can collect the blue stone. Okay, the zombie is lagging a bit behind, which allows us to run through here. Now here's one of the parts where the camera angle screwed me over when I was trying to record the second playthrough. If you're wondering, that door right there is for the dog balcony, which will be coming by later on. It's an optional door to unlock. You have to unlock it from the other side, though. So over here in the courtyard, there are a pair of zombies. I'm going to try to run past this guy on the inside. Supposedly you can avoid triggering that guy if you hug this wall, but you can see right there I tried to do it and I still triggered him, so I don't know how some people do that. It could be one of the changes that they made in this game just to kind of mess with those of us that have played it a little. have played this game too much, I should say. By the way, over by where that zombie was standing, there should be a set of shotgun shells. We are not going to be getting that. We'll pick them up before the boss fight. Right now we are actually heading into the first boss room, but we cannot fight him until we get the four death masks. So right here we're just coming down here to grab a key, and then we are good to just take off. As for the zombies up above, they are... Supposedly they cannot come back if you kill them. I've never tried it myself, I always ran, ran past them. So it's up to you on how you want to do it. Meanwhile, here I am going to examine this to get the sword key, because now is as good as time as any. Like I said, I'm not trying the world record speedrun where every tenth of a second counts. So this is your clue to tell you find the friggin' death masks. And I summarized it in even less words than the book itself. Go me. So the zombies cannot actually come down here. There's an invisible wall stopping them from doing so. The drawback is, there's absolutely nothing stopping them from hovering around here until you come back up. So due to the camera angle, I can't actually see where they are, which is why I'm swinging the knife. So the one turned around, but I don't see the other one, which is why I don't know if it's safe to come back up. And I'm not hearing the contact of knife on flesh, which means I'm not hitting him. See the one guy. I'm gonna run it. Okay, the other guy did not trigger, so apparently I did it correctly. So if you do not trigger the other guy once you see the one turn around, you're greenlit to run past. Otherwise, I actually got through here without getting bit, which is a significant upgrade from my previous attempt. 
As for my recording of this game, I intend to try to make the videos from one save to the next, so my goal is to beat it in less than three hours. I'm going to try to make these segments 20 to 30 minutes, so depending on how the chips fall, we could be looking at a maximum of nine videos, I hope, in the crisp walkthrough. Meantime, if you need a map, it's up here in the Aquarius pot. If you want a dagger and a zombie, it's back over here behind this cabinet thing. There's also the wardrobe room where you change your costumes once they're unlocked, but you have to beat the game to do so. From my experience, whenever you pick up the dagger, you are in too close proximity to a zombie to escape it, and I end up having to use the dagger to take down the zombie. So all in all, I'd say it's not worth getting. As for this hallway, this is the dog hallway in the original Resident Evil, where they would scare you by bursting through the window and trying to maul your ass. For this one, they will only jump through the window if you pass through here a second time. Ideally, this is going to be the one and only time we come through here, so the dog should not be a problem for us. However, if I mess up royally, then we could be dealing with some canines. So, underneath the one... I don't even know what the hell you call this china cabinet, you will find a dagger. Underneath this one, you will find a clip. So, we're just increasing our inventory of things to work with, and over here is where we will start running into more enemies. So let me take a quick look in my inventory. Yeah, I need to make some space. So I'm combining the herbs, and we need to unlock the door that I just walked past. It uses an old lock. Jill can just pick those. Chris has to find some sort of key since he has a lighter instead of a lockpick. Which brings us to the bathroom. Let's pull the plug. I mean, what's the worst that could be in here? I mean, it's just like dirty water, right? I mean, it's not like that's, um, you know, one of those, what do they call them? Hmm. Oh my god! That's a hand! It's a zombie! Kinda miss the old melodramatic version of the original Resident Evil, but for the improvements with this game, it's kind of worth having the new voices. Anyway, our buddy here lacks coordination, so when he tries to approach us, he's just going to faceplant. It's going to give us an opportunity, since he has to get up, to run to the bathtub, grab the key, and then show ourselves the hell out. And I'm not saying later, dude, because guess what? Foreshadowing for the win. So come over here first of all, it's going to save you a little bit of a headache. So we can use the old key. The key is going to break in Zelda fashion. And we can now walk through here. So there are dogs on the other side of the fence. And I tried messing with these. I think the trigger for getting them to attack you is re-entering the area, just like with the one hallway. So I'm grabbing the green herb here first, because I can combine it with the stack I have here to give me a full heal. Meanwhile, with only one inventory space, I'm going to just grab the key item that I need to progress the game, and the remaining green herb and red herb are forfeit. If you're playing as Jill, you can go ahead and grab those. It's up to you. And, hello there. So the room I'm passing by right here is the shotgun room. Jill can just walk in there and get it. Chris is not so fortunate. We have to get another item first before we can get that for Chris. Which is the reason why we'll be coming back here eventually. As for here, we are now approaching the first save room. I'm going to take a detour under the staircase because there's a zombie outside of the save room. And ideally I want to keep getting bit to a minimum. And by minimum, I mean ideally zero. <laughs> Zombies cannot attack you with their bite on the stairs. All they can use is their vomit attack. So right here I need to try to bait him into vomiting. And I'm going to go quiet because I need to hear him puke. Give it a second to dissipate and then you can run past. Like I said, he does have a cooldown on that, like the lunge type move. So we are now able to access the save room and we are going to come out and kill all three of them. In the previous run, I actually got to stack all three of the bodies on top of one another. The significance of that you will find out in a second. So we're ditching the gun here. I don't need that. 
but I need this. This. And some of this. And there was some kerosene out by the dogs, which I guess is your incentive to going back out there, but not worth it in my opinion. Especially since the doorknob out here is kind of broken. If you're playing real survivor, I guess it's okay, but this is normal mode. So we're going to take advantage of the part where these zombies cannot attack you on the stairs other than their vomit. And the vomit hitbox is a little messed up from what I noticed in my previous run, causing me to get hit unnecessarily. So there's two zombies at the top of the stairs. I need you to vomit right now, dude. And the knife animation is slower than I remember. I don't, it could be the same. It's just... I always thought it was faster than that. Zombies have problems on corners. Could be AI related, but does add a little bit of realism, I guess, since zombies are supposed to be a little mentally diminished. And I almost got hit by that one. Okay, he's down, which means I need to bring the other ones down if I want to stack the bodies. This guy's moving, so we need to wait for him to come to the stairs to abuse the whole AI thing. Yeah, I just stabbed your friend. stabbed him repeatedly and liked it. Now I don't know if the knife does different damage depending on where you hit the zombie, like if leg shots are not as valuable as say headshots. So right here I'm kinda of playing it by ear. And I'm too close, I'm taking damage. Ooh. Okay, a little bit of good luck there. Vomit. Now I need to run past him. And be really good luck if he goes down here. Wow. I'm kind of tempted to just go save real quick, just because of how fortunate I'm being. Dude, your friends. Well, it's not actually proper to say you killed a zombie because they're already dead. So what would the proper term for this be? Would it be something like re-murderify them, or what? I mean, we are in the politically correct era, so we have to be as convoluted and counterintuitive as possible. Bastard. Okay, that was totally worth the hit. So I'm going to drop my kerosene here, and I think you can take fire damage if you stand on top of them. So I need to give them a second to burn out. And we will see if we actually did succeed in burning all three of them with one charge of kerosene. That does unlock achievement, an achievement, by the way, if you burn two with one. So regardless of what happens from here, what's over here? Oh. Yeah, right there they're warning you, burn the bodies, otherwise they will come back. And you don't always have to burn them, you could also just headcap them. 
So just do whatever works for you. And I'm going to put a break in the video here. We've been going for 20 or so minutes counting the intro video, so this is as good time as I need to stop. So yeah, there we go, white text. I'm not playing it on easy mode anymore. Okay, I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.